Okay, welcome to my Shadow Bomb Gunslinger build video. I'll be showcasing my level 75 character who is currently doing master mode. So we'll do some gameplay in a level 103 map and I'll switch scenes. Quickly show you our ability. So the main ability that we're using in this build is evasion with the Primal Tenebris mod. Primal, or oh, Primus. The bomb leaves a damaging area of effect instead of inflicting a slowing effect. Very, very nice. So I'll run through the map. You'll see the clear, you'll see the damage, and you see why I like this skill. We also are using Gunslinger's brand. So in the right scenario, if we line up mobs correctly, this does a lot of damage so hopefully we can showcase that as well starting out you go stealth pop the shadow bomb you go stealth again single target mark up all the enemies and then unleash so it's pretty rewarding pretty fun and yeah relatively fast as well pretty clear So mark the target you want to kill, then unleash on him. You line it up correctly, does a lot of damage. I'm also lagging a little bit, so apologies for that. And then we death gaze a railgun on a single target to inflict stasis. And then we just shadow bomb. Make sure we stealth, run up, shadow bomb, stasis. You know, so mark the target, does pretty good damage, and it's pretty fun. But as you can see the damage isn't that good on Gunslinger Brand if there's not many enemies around. So I had to find an alternative skill for single target which is the Shadow Bomb Evasion skill, which surprised me. Wasn't expecting it to do that much damage, but it's pretty good. Especially with the stasis node, which does extra damage 1.5 seconds later. If you inflict stasis, which we do uh, get through Death Gazer, Railgun, like that. So target we want to kill, mark them all, and then unleash. And he dies. The gun, the Gunslinger brand, you always want to group up. For the mobs like I just did. So I can kill rares like that instantly if you do it correctly. It's just not very good for a one target scenario which is where we have to use our shadow bombs. Single target. Maybe in future they'll change gunslinger brand so it does some damage on a single target. But until then, I found the Shadow Bomb Evasion shenanigans to be the best. Okay, so let's quickly run up to the boss, kill the boss, and then we'll go through some of the gear. Also, I'm doing this as a live take, so apologies for lack of production value and any mistakes I make but I am not the best with editing videos and whatnot and it takes quite a bit of time so just thought I'd do it live and this build doesn't really use any of the broken bug nodes that uh, we'll see get nerfed in a few weeks so it should be safe as well in terms of getting nerfed and that whatnot it might honestly get buffed from what I've seen, a lot of the ranged nodes don't really work properly, so it wouldn't surprise me if we see quite a big buff. So yeah, mark the target, inflict stasis, shadow bomb. Pretty simple. Okay, so we'll go through gear. So shoulders, just get damage. You can get some rage and willpower cost reduction for some quality of life. You can 
too crazy. Ferocity is also nice, so look out for those mods. We're running this unique at the moment. Don't need it. I'm just testing to see if the rage gain on block is any good. But yeah, you can just run a similar shoulder to this one. Damage and occult damage is the main mod that you're looking for. And a lot of gear. Unhill, occult damage with ferocity. Cooldown reduction is nice to grab where possible. So we have cooldown reduction on the helm, chest, and pants. And that just means that we can fly more evasion shadow bombs and use dusk shroud more often for mobility and invisibility, which is quite nice. And we have a block gem in the helmet. So yeah, moving on to amulet. I'm running 2% life leech from shadow damage, just some survivability. We have max life, crit damage. You could get occult damage as well, which would be nice. That's the amulet. For chest, we have just a bunch of block chance for gems. We have a lot of resistances, very, very nice for defense. Some ferocity, you could have occult damage there instead. And we have cooldown reduction. For the gloves, we have bolt damage, rage, and willpower cost reduction, just some quality of life, resource generation, ferocity, and whatnot. Pretty simple. For this ring, we have some leech again, this time from Ava damage. And the ring just has crit damage. Some life, you could get a cult damage as well. This ring over here, crit damage, life. Again, you could have some occult damage. For pants, we have the block socketed in. So, uh, damage, and you could get occult damage. This has some good crit, hit chance, and some ferocity. And again, the cooldown reduction. For boots, we have occult damage, ferocity, crit, hit chance, score, move speed, and too crazy. And then for a weapon, we have random toxic damage. Ideally, you'd want Ava damage, shadow damage would scale better. And then I just have three shadow nodes or uh, shadow gems socketed in the weapon. And yeah, so the reason why you want Ava and shadow damage for attacks is obviously it scales with cult damage, so you just do more damage overall. And then the main damaging ability that we're using is obviously the evasion with that Primus, Tenortis, whatever. And that does shadow damage, so I'm just getting as much shadow damage as possible. So that's the gear. Head into the passive tree. So you can start here, grab the crit. We have crit damage. Max ailment stacks here. Grievous Affliction, so I'm not going to really run too much through them. You can have a look at your own passive tree. But yeah, it's nothing too crazy. If you've looked at the nodes, you should be able to tell pretty quickly. But they're doing this one, it's just applying an additional ailment so we can do curse and stasis, so very important. Come up here. We have Belligerent Banner, so just some defense, some nice block, block efficiency here. Getting as much block efficiency is uh, ideal. Just uh, it makes it so your block is more effective and mitigates a higher portion of damage. And you can come up here, get the power of the first men. So multiply elements, generate rage instead of willpower, furious appetite, get the node beside it, frenzied blow. We basically do double damage if we stay above 750 rage while casting a skill. You drop below uh, 750 rage, but you've casted, let's say, the Shadow Bomb, still fine. That Shadow Bomb will snapshot the double damage for the duration that it's on the ground as that ticking effect. So don't worry too much if you drop below 750, but try and stay above it. Then we have Manic Slaughter, some da extra damage, but I mainly take it for the rage gen on kill. Then we go up here. When uh, hit enemies afflicted with stasis, they take 
100% of hit damage again after 1.5 second delay. That adds a lot of uh, DPS while we're bossing. So we Death Gazer Railgun, apply stasis, put the Shadow Bomb underneath them, which starts ticking. Then 1.5 seconds later, it does some additional damage. That additional damage can't crit. Not sure why, but yeah, it is still a nice DPS increase. Big Dire Juncture, just good for defense. Get the ailment stacks here. Should mention I get the Pierce. So this is how you make Gunslinger brand feel really, really good. So if you're close to the targets and you line them all up in a straight line, it'll pierce all of them and do a lot of damage. And I take two points here to get the PS to all projectiles. I grab the max willpower and rage. And then I grab a cult damage increased by 5% for every cursed stack an enemy has. You can apply a max total of 30 stacks with this setup, which means that when you shadow bomb that's going to be applying curse quite regularly and then on top of that you can apply curse through your gunslinger brand and a few other means but with the stack multiplier you should be able to stack up a decent amount of curse on the target and benefit from the damage gain so we get seven percent actually because of this node we take beside it that's if you stack 30 that's seven percent Increase damage times 30. You can do the math, so I think it's 210. Yeah, 210% increased damage, which is pretty good. And lastly, we head up here, grab the block efficiency, just makes block more effective. You can do this tree at level 69 if you take out the five points here. And then this node here, you'll have a little bit less defense, but you'll have most of the, the major nodes on the build. So we'll go into our tool modifiers. So for evasion, take area control, frenzy of betrayed, put in reduction, boiling ink, grants rage for each enemy hit by a projectile, which even works with the ground effect that ticks. So every tick is giving us some rage gain. That's pretty nice. Take barrage for an additional projectile. If you line the evasion, you get really close to a mod, uh, sorry, a mob, and use evasion, and then throw down the shadow bomb. If you overlap the two area of effects that tick, it should be taking the damage from both the shadow bombs on the ground. So it's good to get right close and make sure that they're stacked on top of each other as much as possible. Then Primus Tenebris, and then Slicing Dash for some weapon damage. Dust Shroud, Unseen Thrills, Friendly Territory, Final Trick, Light Swift Retraction, Increase Move Speed, Brain of Phantasm, lets you move through enemies, very very nice, and Reduce Cooldown. Mark of Impurity, Big game hunting, weight of culpability, target eliminated, strange mercy, guilt by association, a sentence accepted, death gazer railgun, shots and flick stasis, increases damage, fragmented rounds, com comfortable distance, reckless gunner, Ranged superior superiority. One a simple shot. And internal detonation. I'm just leveling a skill in my fifth slot, so put whatever you want. Then gunslinger brand. We have plus five plus five number of targets. Time manipulator. Order through chaos. Friendly fire, which is very, very nice if you target your first, so you target the mob you want to kill, let's say it's a rare, line them all up nicely with other mobs around it, and then basically unleash all your projectiles which will pierce and hit that mob, and then all the crit damage that occurs on all the other mods, uh, monsters, sorry, will bounce back to the original target. So all the bullets are piercing, hitting that target, and then basically coming back and bouncing to it to do 
another round of damage so it's insane if you line it up correctly very very rewarding very very fun then we take wilds gun gunsman so fires all shots whenever this skill is used pretty important okay so for attributes you want to put everything into ferocity just to get as much crit as possible and as much damage bonus as possible pretty straightforward and on that note i believe i've covered everything in this guide so if you have any questions please leave a comment below my twitch description will be in the info as well and yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed my shadow bomb gunslinger build and i'll see you in the future